Everybody, it's Tyler here at the Central Illinois Regional Checking Team number 4143 Mars Wars. And I'm here with Josh, Jack, and William. And you gotta check out this robot. Mars Wars has been known for building some very innovative sword drives throughout the years with their robot, a scoring machine as well. Of course, we'll follow that cargo journey going up through a great traversal climber. All this and more coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. Your destination for first content, updates, and gaming. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, supported by Stryker Careers. First alumni and mentors are making Stryker a top priority for their internships and careers. That's because Stryker knows that those in first are the leaders and innovators of tomorrow. If you want to help make the world a better place by creating life-saving medical devices and technology, get started at careers.stryker.com. Competition season is here. Head on over to thebluelines.com to catch all the events each week. Don't forget to submit your clips of the week to discord.gg forward slash first updates now. Vote in the FRC Top 25 and play in our free fantasy pick'em. Catch fun shows live on Mondays and Tuesdays at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Josh, we're going to start out. Your team has been known for building some really cool types of swerve drives. So you have a differential swerve this year. I'd love to hear more about uh, what that is, why you decided to create it, and uh, how it's been working out for your team so far. Okay, so our differential swerve drive, it mainly runs off these two uh, Falcon motors and they each turn one gear, which makes, means we can turn the um, robot in any direction, forwards, backwards, side to side, and spin, depending on how the gears are turning. And here's an actual module of our swerve drive, which is, I mean, you can see how it works. It turns this bevel gear, which turns bevels on the wheels, which is right here. You can see this gear turns these, these gears and that makes the wheel go. Well, let's start to move into your robot. Uh, Jack, I know you're going to be covering that kind of cargo journey going through. So let's start with your intake. Talk to me about uh, your choice to go, like the over-the-bumper intake, uh, what kind of iterations maybe you've gone through in the season, that sort of thing. Um, so for this season, we actually kind of modeled off of our last year's robot. Because um, last year we, with the uh, yellow cargo, um, we had the idea of going over the bumper just so it's a little bit easier. Um, and we also don't like putting too many notches in our bumper because it weakens our frame. Um, but then our pickup is a four point uh, acting uh, pickup. It goes to, it has these two pneumatic cylinders that push it out, up, um, and also back in. So, um, and as you can see, we have a, we have a Falcon up here. Um, originally we had a Neo, um, and the Neo would, well, didn't have enough torque in the motor, so we had to switch up to a Falcon. Um, and it, all, the, all these rods here are belt driven. So you guys have a very compliant intake, right? It's able to wobble around a lot. So when yes. you're looking at like a field and robot interactions, uh, what made you choose to go that route? Um, so last year we used the polycarbonate as well. Um, and we found that it can withstand a lot of hits, even though it is really floppy. Sure. So it's good because whenever we hit something, it kind of folds back in on itself and it doesn't really take as much damage. This is our feeder here. It's got these three wheels. The front two are driven by this motor here. And um, the, these two front move as when our intake moves, so it pulls it up in there. And then this one doesn't move until we actually decide to feed into the shooter because we were having problems where we would have the ball come up and it get stuck in the shooter before we were ready to shoot it. Um, and then we had this wheel driving on another motor as well. Do you guys use any sort of uh, sensors or anything like that as the cargo comes in? Um, so we were originally going to use a ball sensor, but we decided not to because this wheel right here holds it kind of the best and kind of just add more possible fl uh, flaws. Yeah, makes sense. So let, let's go into your uh, shooter. It looks like you got uh, adjustable hood uh, with it. I'd also love to hear about the, the low exit point of a cargo on your robot as well too. We see some teams shoot, you know, they're quite a bit up higher. Your team shoots from pretty low. Talk to me about that. Um, so we didn't want to go up too high because we didn't want our center of gravity being too high. Um, but we use this big flywheel in here. It's got these four smaller wheels head held together by threaded rod on the inside. And then there's a hex shaft that goes through them, driven by the two Neos on the sides. Um, and then our adjustable shooter there, that has um, pneumatic cylinders that push it out and in. Um, there's also a Neo on that one, controlling the four wheels there to kind of reduce the backspin. Where's, uh, for Mars Wars, where's your sweet spot to shoot from on the field? Um, we typically try and stay al along the edge of the tarmac or in the safety zone. Last, so let's uh, go into your climber. William's going to be talking a bit more about that. So your team's got a great traversal climb. Talk to me about uh, the climber itself, and let's go through some of the stages of the climb itself, too. Yeah, so this year's climber, so we have two independent arms on each side. So this allows us to kind of move around a lot more freely on the bars when climbing. So it is driven by two motors underneath, two Neo motors. 
So each motor controls a different orientation of the climber itself. So the center Neo motor down inside, so this Neo motor here and this Neo motor here controls the pivoting of the climber itself. And then these two Neo motors here controls the extend and contract of the kind of arm, kind of hook arm, yeah. So can we deploy the climber? Let's talk about some of the stages that go into it. Yeah. So this would be stage one. So this is when you are driving underneath the second bar in the hangar and you are grabbing the second bar. So you just drive right in front of it and then you just kind of hook onto it. So this would be climbing, pulling ourselves up from the second bar, getting ready to hook onto the third bar. Then this would kind of so then this would now pivot our robot, so then we are in position to grab the third bar. Then this allowed us to pull ourselves up onto the third bar while releasing the second bar. Then we are now pivoting backwards to grab the traversal bar at the very top. Then we pull ourselves up to grab the traversal bar. We swing forward, so then we hit the traversal bar. And then we finally pull, our, pull ourselves up while pivoting away from the last bar. So we've seen a lot of teams kind of do a concept of like a monkey bar thing, but this is the closest I've seen to where it's almost like human hands doing the monkey bars itself. What made you come up with this type of concept for a climb? Yeah, so we wanted it, so it was like, so our challenges was that we wanted it to be fast and reliable for climbing, and we kind of, thought, okay, monkeys, they're fast and reliable when climbing with ropes and that kind of stuff. So we kind of just took inspiration from that and just kind of mocked that a little bit. Well, Mars Wars 4143, building impressive robots every year. We appreciate you taking the time to speak with us here. Good luck at Central Illinois and, of course, the rest of the season well. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks to Stryker Careers for their support in this video. First alumni and mentors are making Stryker a top priority for their internships and careers. That's because Stryker knows that those in first are the leaders and innovators of tomorrow. If you want to help make the world a better place by creating life-saving medical devices and technology, get started at careers.stryker.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.